Hey there. Okay, so we're going to wrap up um, the demos on materials, um, PBR mat, substances, textures. Um, so I'm going to look again at this little landscape thing uh, that we made in a, a previous demo, uh, which we made with a grid sop and then some noise to displace it. And uh, I want to revisit that. Um, thinking instead, you know, instead of using the noise sop, uh, using some of our new techniques that we've just learned uh, right here to create different texture maps and use a height map with a PBR, uh, which is then uh, displacing uh, the geometry somehow. So this is really uh, easy, great way to create the kind of like uh, pseudo landscapey looking things. Uh, so let's just dive in. So we've got uh, a few other tricks also. So basically, you know, instead of using um, dedicated images that were made with like a model, like in the, the rock example that I did before, uh, or instead of using substances like I did before. So really this is just being generated from a noise top. Uh, that's animated a little bit. Uh, and then I'm creating um, a f just a few other maps. I'm just directly kind of using that as a height map, creating a normal map here, uh, and then uh, running that through a ramp and a look up top to create the uh, the color map, which gives the, the color for that. So we'll, uh, we'll recreate that from scratch again. Um, this kind of sculptural thing, that's the same as what I had done before. Uh, so box to noise, uh, the box consolidating corner points, uh, which creates uh, a different um, connection between the, the corners when we go through noise, wire, and texture. I don't know if that was even necessary there, but whatever. Uh, and then also a new trick, uh, which I did not do before, is creating a skybox. Uh, so we'll, we'll recreate this and talk a little bit about um, how this is handy. Um, the the great reason to do this is because it, it, if you're using anything like fog, um, which I'm, I'm using here and what I was, I was using in that previous example also, uh, doing a sky box actually makes the fog behave much more normally because the sky is not just some like ramp top that you put like over uh, in the background. The, the sky is actually a geometry that behaves in that 3D space and thus uh, the fog kind of... Uh, interacts with it in a more naturalistic sort of way. Um, so that's that's the reason to use that. Um, you know, we've got the environment light again with just a constant. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about like how the normal light and the environment light can, can interact. Uh, and I'm also using a, a extra trick here using a, uh, a noise top with something called the projector map for the light. So that's another kind of a cool thing. So let's Let's do this from scratch. Let's just do a new container and I'll dive in here. And where should we start? Let's just start with a grid. And I know I want this to be on the ZX. And I know I want this to be super big. So I don't know, let's just start with 2020. And I'll go ahead and make that 100 by 100 so we can see. wireframes right there, okay. Um, the more points there are, the more smooth, the smoother the, our um, height map situation can be. Uh, and let's go ahead and do attribute create. Again, I know like I'm gonna be working with PBRs and sometimes I'll, I'll get errors like in my render top. So it's gonna be asking me uh, to compute normals and tangents. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Okay, and let's do our standard Okay, and let's just go ahead and plop that down here. Okay, and I want to go ahead Let's do a Null for both of these Just so I can control where they're looking a little bit better. And let's bring this up a little 
little bit. Same thing with the lights. Okay, something like that. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead. I don't. I don't feel like recreating this part, so I'm just gonna copy that. Okay, cool. Uh, and you can see I actually rename this, so I'm gonna go ahead and rename this as grounds. Okay, uh, and by default, you know, uh, the render is grabbing every single geo. And again, if I only wanted to do one of them, I can directly type that name in. Okay, sad little jungle gym in a concrete in the middle of a parking lot. Looks like. Um, okay, let's let's start playing with our texture maps, and then we can make something out of this. So I'll do a noise. I'm gonna go ahead and make this 1024. And I want it to be kind of bigger, maybe something like that. You know, whatever. It depends on how how smooth and curvy you want your hills to be. Maybe I want a little bit more dramatic, a little more cliffy. Let's see how that does. And I'll go ahead and let's see how do I want this. Let's just do in the Z. And make it nice and slow. Spell it right. A little bit slower. Okay. So we'll just see what that makes. All right, we'll do a null over here. I'll go ahead and call it height. Let's get our PBR. Go ahead and grab that there, material. And it's like usual, so this just kind of got super dark. Um, we'll go ahead and get environment light here like we did before. Constants. Environment map, okay, that looks better. Um, Oh, and before I kind of had a the shadowy thing happening too, but I, I'm not going to worry about that right now because it, it takes a little effort to really dial in those shadow settings. So I don't feel like messing around with that right now. Um, okay, let's do let's go ahead and just do this height and see what happens. So maps. Actually, you know what? Ooh, I need normal first. Can't do height before we do normal maps. So let's do that. I'm going to add the level in case I want to. Make those ridges extra crunchy. And again, you don't need to rename them like this, but kind of makes sense, kind of helps. OK, enable height map. And let's go ahead and displace. OK, cool. Good enough for now, I guess. Maybe I'll just try turning on shadows a little bit, because it should also kind of be shadowy on the on the hill. Okay, let's do a color map. Uh, okay, so look up top. We talked a little bit about before. So if we do a ramp. So uh, typically, look up top, we have just a uh, monochrome uh, image coming in the top, and then a sort of color. You can see look up image, source image. So it's uh, referencing uh, whatever's on the left side here is going to go towards black. Whatever's on the right side is going to be applied to the white parts. So let's get creative. You want to do so bright areas. Maybe this time I'll do a little. More bluish thing. I can get. We can get a little crazy if we want to. It's gonna be kind of lime brownish. So okay, there we go. That's a little bit crazy, but that's fine. Just bring that down there a little bit. Okay, let's see what happens there. 
And uh, for my color map, uh, what I was doing before too, I, I want to add a little bit of a little grain to it. That's because I made that 1024, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's 1024. That's fine because I ended up 1024. So I don't, I don't really care about that right now. But let's do another noise. And output, input plus noise. Yeah, let's do that. So whatever my noise is, it's going to be added to this. So actually, I want a very kind of low setting here. And let's do random. There we go. So we can see that it just adds a little crunch. Zero, 3, zero, 5. Okay, that looks good. And I'll name this color. So this is going to look kind of crazy. Okay, cool. Kind of like it. Um, actually, can I do that backwards? You know, I just decided I want the low parts to be blue and the high parts to be brown because it's kind of like water, right? So I'm just going to flip that. I could have done it differently, but flip it. Okay. Now we're good. Okay, we got like a land thing, like a water looking thing. I'm fine with that. And let's do, let's add a little extra thing here. up so it'll add a little extra something my jungle gym is being flooded now okay cool um so i can kind of bring that down a little bit so it's kind of move just a little bit okay uh so just you know at a glance that's that's it um so the the height map is moving because our noise is being animated here. And the great thing about this being as this changes, the color map automatically also changes because they're both being generated by the same noise. So it's a, it's a nice way to have those things kind of go hand in hand. Uh, so it's very easy to do the kind of kind of a cool scientific, pseudo-scientific visualization thing with like um, tall like topographies. Um, also, the cool thing about this is um, the geometry is being displaced by the PBR material and, and how it's working with the geo, basically, which means it's actually um, much more optimized. Um, it's uh, leaning a lot more on the GPU to do that. Uh, and so one caveat that we've talked about in the past, I mean, if I like zoom back to this one over here, um, one caveat I've talked about in the past, especially if you have something like, like the noise with, um, you know, this sort of a thing happening. Um, this is all being processed on the CPU uh, because it's just happening in SOP land. So all of the points, what I have like 2,500 points, it's not a whole lot of points. Um, but um, I can, I can envision a future where I can suddenly really throttle my, my frame count if I'm uh, changing SOP points every single frame, um, especially if I am you know have, have a lot more points, a lot higher resolution kind of uh, at play. So doing it this height map way is uh, much more optimized. Uh, we can get you know, very high, if you have the, the paid versions, we could be doing, you know, uh, 8K uh, resolutions, and it's still going to run at 60 frames a second. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking, so it's, you know, it's smooth enough, but, you know, I'm looking back at this, I've got 10,000 points. Actually, that's probably, it's probably pretty good. So I, I already kind of like made a lot there. By default, if we kind of go back the default setting here. Let's do like a high displacement. I just want to get to a point where we can kind of see it can get kind of jagged. And I right there I see a little like jagged edge. Um, because what we're doing, like only the points are being displaced, right? Um, 
So you know, you know th this point is basically looking at the nearest um, point on the height map and being moved accordingly. Like white would be all the way up, black would be all the way down. Um, but if we only have this many points, like it's going to be kind of jagged in between, right? So this is uh, something to keep in mind. You know, if you're doing a height map uh, thing and it's looking too jagged, um, probably we should just go. And actually, you know what? Maybe I could make this smaller. Let me see how, depending on where my camera is, I could probably get away with it being like 10 by 10. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. So that's going to just give me a lot greater resolution in my height mapping. Okay, it's like a wave coming through. Uh, I'm gonna change this brown actually, cause I'm feeling like I'm not digging the brown. If we do like, do like a darker green maybe. There. Okay. So what else did I do? I added a, a sky box. Um, let's go ahead and make that. So let's actually go over here and if we have a look in the geometry viewer, we can see what's actually happening here. So I made a huge sphere. Uh, you know, it de depends on what you really want to do. Like if I really wanted my, you know, to create something where the camera is kind of like moving around freely, um, then I'd have to figure out some system where, okay, maybe my grid needs to be 500 by 500. The sphere needs to be like super huge. And so like anywhere my camera moves, you know, I could kind of turn around and I'm always going to like see that that sky box. Um, for this example right now, like I knew like I'm not really going to be moving the camera around. So uh, I was only you know really concerned with, with making this one side of the sky box. Um, so I ended up doing uh, a carve, which we'll look at right now. Uh, so let's do that. So it's sphere and then carve and then uh, texture and then with a little just ramp on the font. So let's make that. Okay, sphere. And you know what? I'm going to split this. I'm going to kind of do that geometry viewer again as I have my sphere just so I can get a sense for how big this thing is. Oh, wait, first I need to actually put it through a geo in order to show up in the geometry viewer. Okay, I'll call that skybox. Okay, so, okay, my sphere is already like enormous, too big. Um, I mean, I guess too big is better than too small, I guess, but whatever, 10, maybe that's good. Uh, let's see what a carve does. Um, this is another uh, little, modeling tool um you know touch designer is not the greatest uh program if you actually want to get kind of get your hands dirty modeling a lot of the geometry you know something like blender maya programs like that are way better houdini uh which a touch designer was based on in part um but carve is another sop uh, operator that lets us kind of play play around with that a little bit more so i'm going to just carve half of this Thing. So there's my camera right there. So actually I want, how do I want this? Probably like that, right? Yeah, there's my camera. So like zero to 0 0.5 is what I want. And I'm gonna go ahead and just, um, you know, I think thinking ahead, I'm gonna apply a ramp to the material to have the kind of ramp of the sky. Um, and I think I want that to be a little smaller. So something like that. And then maybe also that in the Z space, that's, that's pretty, um, so I, oh, one more thing with the carve, it actually didn't, doesn't go perfectly like that. Um, whatever. I'm, I'm fine with how that looks. Uh, but that's pretty deep on the Z though, right? So let's do something more flat-ish like that and then move that back. So this is kind of cool now where, okay, so actually my my uh, ground is going through the back of the skybox. 
which could be a good thing. Okay, so I think that's fine. And let's go ahead and do a Fong. And let's get a color map. So this is a fun part, just kind of making a, a sky image. Okay. Um, so actually, let's just plop down some, some blues and stuff here and we'll see what happens. So we're not seeing the whole expanse of this ramp, right? So we're just kind of seeing a little section of it. There we go. Um, so if we look at the geometry view again, we should be able to see. There we go. So we can kind of see better uh, in the geometry view how that, that ramp is being applied. So the you know the the view of the camera is basically seeing right about at this halfway point of the ramp it's a little bit above the halfway point so that's where the we really want our gradient um, to be visible because really there's just a really thin swatch of this that we're we're actually seeing so White like that, and maybe here I want. Something like that is looking better, I think. Okay, that's that's fine for now. Uh, we've got kind of a dark blue down to kind of a grayish thing right there. Um, okay, this looks pretty crazy. Um, so also I had a texture sop in here. So again, this, I mean, this got applied um, by default uh, pretty well, I think. Um, but I keep getting rid of the geometry viewer and then keep deciding I want it back. Um, but sometimes this can give us extra abilities to determine how that color map is being applied to it. So if I do something like, oh, so that's kind of crazy. Rotation, offset. So I can kind of play around with how that is offset. So that's kind of nice. If I wanted to really fine tune something like that. Okay. So this could also allow me to do something like maybe in my ramp, I can uh, program a whole sequence from like sunset to nighttime to sunrise to daytime with different color bands in there. And then here with the offset, we can imagine like, oh, so we're going to daytime, then we're going to like nighttime, right? So we can, um, you know, one ramp contains the, the skybox uh, map for the whole day. That can be kind of cool. Um, everything else, I mean, this looks pretty good, I think. So I'm not going to tweak that anymore. Uh, but I'll just leave that where it is. Um, and then... So let's add some fog. That was one more um, thing that I wanted to play with and kind of show the difference here. We'll do like just linear. So let's look here again. So the sphere, so the radius is four in the Z, the center is negative one. So it's going back to negative five on the Z probably. And my cam is where? It's at five on the Z. So the back of the skybox is about 10 units away from my camera. Uh, so fog far as 10. So right, so the skybox is going to be like 100% enveloped by whatever this color is. So I think I don't quite want the skybox to be totally enveloped like that, right? So maybe 56. No, no. So let's do a kind of bluish thing here and see what happens. So this is kind of like covering the whole thing in like a little atmospheric perspective fog. Um, okay, that's pretty cool. Um, so fog near zero, so what if that's... So if I do that farther, then that means 0% uh, fog starts at five units away from the camera. Uh, so the, the very front part here is going to be like zero fog. 
if I want fog to start right where the camera is, if I, if I put zero, okay, now the fog is starts zero percent, and then it slowly increases as you get farther away. So maybe I want a little section in the front that's totally clear. Um, okay, that looks fine. It's okay, whatever. Uh, let's play around with the lighting some more. Um, so let's add let's add a projector map. So what I did before. So in, when you're using PBR, so by default, everything kind of went dark. Um, if I could hit dimmer here, so we'll just like go back to dark here. Because um, this, the ground has the PBR, the skybox has a fong, so it's it's still kind of lit up right now. Um, what if we did, okay, so let's boost this up some more so we can see it. Just to kind of see what we're doing. So this is another way. So I mean, technically, uh, if you're not using an environment map, which we'll talk about next week, um, you know, instead of using environment light, we could just use a normal light and like boost up that dimmer a lot. Uh, but then we kind of easily get into this like overexposed uh, situation. But I'm going to do this just to show uh, what the projector map thing does. So let's do bigger. Something like that, that's fine. Let's do another absolute time. So the idea is these are going to be kind of like clouds or something. So what a projector map is, um, is basically it's, it's like a, a mask. You imagine like the light is shining. Projector map is like putting a mask in front of it. So it kind of casts shadows, um, whatever is black in the projector map, uh, the light does not pass through. So it's like a, a mask almost. Um, so let's just plop this in and see. You know what, first, I'm gonna do a test to make sure the angle, uh, so I can see that the angle of the projector map is very weird. So let's do this. Uh, so I'm just making this all white, but things are still black, right? So why, why is that? Because projector angle is only set to 10. So look at this. So this is uh, <laughs> very dramatically changing the angle of that uh, projector map. So I want to just make this wide enough that it covers everything. Let's just do 40, just to be safe. OK. And so let's just keep it at spot for now and see. OK, let's bring this back down. So now, this is a very kind of moody, foggy landscape. The projector map is kind of moving. It's like exposing areas. S some areas are brighter, some are darker. You know, to be a little more conservative. Okay, let's like do the display scale just like a little bit less. To place midpoint kind of just brings everything up or down a little bit. And then it's just kind of fun. You start to play around like, okay, what if I change my noise a little bit? Let's bring heart period way down. All right, now we're looking pretty craggy. All right, looking great. Um, so this also brings up, when, especially when there's like all these like finer points. Um, one other thing that we never talked about, or we've talked about a little bit in the past. Let me do point five. Okay, that's kind of nice. I kind of like that. Um, let's do a little bit, a little bit more towards gray, so it's a little less cliffy. That's cool. Oh, if this was all like red, it'd be like boiling lava at this point. That's pretty cool. Um, 
So the height map is, so if you imagine like this, this is not actually an image for our eyes. This is an image that is computational. So it's meant for the, for the PBR to read. Um, that said, you know, we see this as a grayscale image from like black to white, but really it's just, it's just data points, right? Uh, if I click this, right click, or no, not field guide, pixel values. Okay, and I can kind of zoom in here. I'm, I'm middle clicking here to zoom in. Um, wherever my cursor is, you can see down there, right? We see the, the values. Um, this is, if I do this, middle click, format. 8-bit fixed RGBA is the uh, form, pixel format of this top. Um, which means the RGBA is defined in ranges from 0 to 255. And we can kind of see this. This is white. So if you see down there RGBA, it's all pretty much up to 255 or so. Um, so that means, okay, there's 256 steps between the black and white, right? That means our height map is only going to have 256 steps from flat to kind of tall, right? Um, but there is a way, like what if we want to have a, a more more kind of smooth um, topography or, or whatever? We can accomplish that by changing our pixel format. Let's just go to our, our parent noise here. If we go into common pixel format instead of 8-bit fixed, let's do, you know what, let's just do 32-bit float mono because uh, actually I'm just using black and white here I don't need RGB uh, mono signal is is great for me okay oh wait actually you know what for the lookup I do need RGBA <laughs> so let's do okay 32 bit float RGBA got it okay so what happened now let's go back to our hype so all, all the other operators after that are gonna be propagated like so now all of them are 32 bit float 32 bit float uh, instead of just having a range from 0 to 255 um, there is a uh, gazillion which is a technical term uh, millions and millions of steps between black and white and we could kind of see this here where it's very fine-tuned floating points in between there um, so this is going to enable us to control our uh, height map uh, in much more detailed ways. This is kind of cool. It's very like the fog, I think, is adding a lot in the projector map. Um, so when using a height map, that's also something to be aware of. Like I would, in general, go ahead and start with, um, with if you're starting with noise or whatever your kind of master operator is, um, put that into 32-bit float. Even if you're starting with a um, you know some other image, uh, you can go ahead and, and just change that to 32-bit float over here. And as we learned about uh, HDR images that we're going to use for the environment map, um, that we'll we'll learn a little bit more about that. That was really like fine gradations of, of pixel values, but I don't know. I'm kind of happy with this. So that's just using our, still our normal light, right? So maybe for now, you know, I could bring this environment light back up, maybe just a little bit. because so that's gonna put like an even light over everything. And then my other light's just at like maybe 0.2. So as it is now, I, I don't have like a, a special environment map. So, you know, maybe, maybe we could just kind of put this a little bit lower and let the other light do most of the job, but okay, not bad.